Welcome to The Hidden World of Women, a podcast brought to you by Women's Health and Wellbeing Services. My name is Emma and I'll be your host for today's episode. Welcome to the latest episode of The Hidden World of Women. This week here in Western Australia, we are recognising that it is Stroke Week and raising awareness for strokes. Uh, So I'm joined today by an absolutely amazing woman. Lisa is a mum to two teen boys and that in itself deserves a medal. She's a wife, she's an AFL lover and all around footy fan and a gym junkie. Thank you so much for joining me today, Lisa. Thank you. Fab. So, uh, Gym Junkie, that's probably a really good place to start. So, I often joke and say that um, going to the gym is bad for your health because, you know, when you go to the gym, like nobody ever gets has to have a shoulder reconstruction from sitting on the couch, do they? No. So, <laughs> <laughs> but for you, going to the gym had a very different impact on your life. Definitely. Um, I had um, weight issues <laughs> at the start. Um, so, I joined the gym. And I lost a heap of weight. And, and you look um, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, I um, actually had my aneurysm at the gym. So um, yeah. So, oh my goodness. So tell me what happened. So you were at the gym. Yep. And um, I had the thunderbolt headache. And um, I put my weights down. And um, my PT said, are you Okay. Um, and I said no, and she said, call an ambulance straight away. Oh, my and, goodness. So um, yeah, I was at the hospital 45 minutes after the aneurysm. <laughs> so how did your PT know to call an ambulance? Um, she's, yeah, in touch with me yeah. um, and what I can do, and if I said I wasn't okay, yeah. um, I wasn't okay, yeah. and she should, should call an ambulance. So Wow, and... Okay, what would have happened if you hadn't been at the gym and you hadn't been with people? Um, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, yeah, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> yeah, and I was driving to the gym um, 20 minutes before and oh 20 minutes after I would have been driving home. So I was very, very lucky that I didn't clean up someone that I knew. Yeah. Um, so oh my goodness, and very I, fortunate. It's, I mean, it sounds really ridiculous to go you know, wow, how lucky are you that it happened the way that it did and when yeah. it did. But how lucky are you that it happened when it did and the way that it exactly. did. Exactly, yeah. And I feel lucky that it happened when it did. Yeah. So um, you said you had a thunderbolt headache. Yeah. What is that? I mean, obviously it's a um, really, really bad headache. Really, really bad. And it went down the left side of my face. So, yeah, it just came out of the blue. Well, mm-hmm. not out of the blue. I had a headache three days prior. Like um, four, three days? Four, three days, ah. yeah. And, um, yeah, I just thought it was... A headache? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, tension so, headache. So, because we were returning to pre-COVID work. Uh, um, and, and, yeah, all of the I stress thought it was... everything from yeah, that. Exactly. And, yeah, exactly. So, this was in the middle of COVID? Um, do... Uh, July last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I guess After. we'd had about four months of being like working from home exactly. and that kind of thing and just yeah. heading back into yep. the office. Yep. Wow. So what happened from there? So I was um, admitted to Fiona Stanley and then um, they sent me to Sir Charles Gardner because I had to have um, a procedure that they needed to do before the following Monday Mm because the um, neurosurgeons were working from Fiona Stanley on the Mondays. Um, So they sent me to Fiona um, Sir Charles Gardner Mm -hmm. and um, I had the stent put in um, in, on the Friday. And, yeah, and then I had the stroke on 13 days after the aneurysm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a lot to process. Yes. How did you process that? Um, my family and friends were really supportive mm. um, and the doctors and nurses were fantastic um, and I felt really safe in their hands. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just maintained a positive attitude and laughed a lot <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't do anything else so well, yeah that is either laugh or cry exactly and it's 
probably healthier to laugh. It, yep. Yeah. So what was the – can you tell me what happened for the stroke? So the doctors and nurses were walking towards me to do their rounds on the Sunday um, and I went to say hello to them and that was it. <laughs> I just passed out and, um, yeah, again, very lucky that it happened at, when it did. That's it, right in front of the doctors yep. and nurses? Yeah. Wow. So what – did you have to have medical procedures because of that? I'm assuming you would have. Um, I had to have a thrombectomy. Um, so that was, um, I think they went through my groin and um, did the angiogram to remove the clot mm-hmm. in the stent. Um, and then I had to have massive rehab. <laughs> yeah, so it, obviously having a stroke can have varying degrees of impact on yep. people. Yeah. It had a significant impact on you initially? Definitely. So yep. what, I guess, what were those? So I couldn't re- move the right side of my body um, and I lost all my speech. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the stroke would have been, the blood clot would have been in the left side of your yes. brain, which yep. does, so the left side of your brain controls the, the right, right side, side of your body yep. and it also controls your speech centres yep. and um, processing and those yes. things. Yeah. So I lost all that. <laughs> so you went from being completely um, competent and self-sufficient and able to look after yourself and care for yourself yes. to in an instant not being able to walk, move, speak. Pretty much <laughs> That must have been tricky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are other words for that, but Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How do you how do you I mean, there's no option. You've got to do it. Yeah. But how do you get your head around that? Um again I felt pretty lucky that I had the stroke when I did. Yeah. Um it could have been a lot worse if I had it in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Um so I counted my lucky stars and, um, yeah, everyone was so helpful at the hospital. So the physios, the speech pathologists, everyone, and, again, my family and friends. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I just sucked it up (laughs) and got on with it. Yeah, and there there is no other option. Exactly. I suppose there is, though, because you can choose to refuse to get on with it. You can choose to get angry and... Um, you know, did you find that anger or, you know, why me coming um, into it at all? Not until I got home from, oh, yeah, when I got home from hospital, it was harder. Yeah. Um, because, like, I think I was going out for um, a dinner mm-hmm. and I was trying, like, it was summer and I was trying to straighten my hair uh, and um do I my makeup with that at the best exactly. of times so. <laughs> <laughs> i know i know so um yeah and i couldn't do my um eyeliner with my uh, right hand and it was like oh i was so upset <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only time i really sometimes it's the straw upset. that broke the camel's back you exactly. know i've been through everything and now i can't even put on my own damn eyeliner exactly <laughs> did you ask your husband to do it or did um, you just go with naked eyes no i did I did it. <laughs> we are not leaving this house till I, I put my own eyeliner on. I know. So, yeah, I did it, but it made me break. Yeah. So, but that's the only time. So, that was six months after. Yeah. So, how so, long were you in hospital? 55 days. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how did your kids cope with that? I mean, how did amazing. they cope with the whole thing? Yeah. They were amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, they... Again, my family and friends supported everyone. Um, They did a roster for meals. Um, They did a roster for visiting hours. Um, Yeah. So you were able to have visitors? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank God. Yeah. Which again, thank goodness, you know, so obviously we were coming out of the COVID restrictions, yep. which meant you could actually go to the gym. Yes. Um, but it also meant that people could come and visit you in exactly, hospital. Exactly, yeah. Whereas yep. a month prior and you would have been there by yourself. Yes. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. So um, we were very lucky. Yeah. We've got a great community. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And so the boys, well, I guess that meant your husband, well, he wasn't home alone with the boys for the 55 days because no. you did have that whole village support. Yeah. Yeah. And they are teen boys. Yeah. How do you think they coped with seeing mum so helpless? The eldest one um, didn't talk about it. Mm. He talked about it to his girlfriend. Ah, nice. um, But he didn't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. A few grunts. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Um, He didn't talk about it to the family. Yeah. Um, But the youngest one, he gave me shit all the time and that's how we coped. Nice. So. That's 100% our coping mechanism yeah. in our house as well. Yeah. We make fun of people, you know, who are in hospital or unwell because yes. if you're nice to them, that means they're dying. Exactly. So you have to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I know we have a twisted sense of humour, but it works for us. Yes. So. Yeah. 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 That was, and it sounds like great. you had that same yep. kind of thing with yes. him. Yeah. And I think that helps everybody else around as well. Yes. Because if somebody else is finding humour and, and you're laughing with it, yeah. then it's still, you're still there. Yes, yes. So. And in my brain, even though I couldn't talk, mm-hmm. it all made sense to me from a very um, close to the stroke. Like yeah. I knew what was going on, mm-hmm. but I couldn't talk about it. So yeah. I knew it was there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was hopeful that I could talk again. <laughs> How long did it take? It's still not good. <laughs> I think I think it's not good, but that's comparing it to what I was before. Yeah. So um, obviously it's come a long way. A hundred percent, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, but probably when I – it's improving all the time. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, probably about Christmas time, it improved a lot yeah. and it's improving more every time. Could you – so that was obviously after you'd left the hospital? Yes. Could you speak before you left the hospital? Limited. Ah. Yep. So you went home with very limited speech and not knowing whether or not you would rep- return um, to – I could call an ambulance and say my name and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, That was one of the conditions about going home. So (laughs) So I was going to make a joke and say, okay, so you got your part. You um, said before we came on air that uh, part of your speech therapy was ordering a skinny latte. Yes. And I was going to make a joke and go, you know, good to see you got your priorities right. You left being able to order your coffee. But I suppose it does make sense that you left being able to call an ambulance. Yes, (laughs) yes. So I needed to know my name and address and... um, where I was so if I, anything happened to me because um, the risk of seizures after the stroke mm-hmm. is um, quite common. Yeah. So I had to figure out everything like that um, and, yeah, I worked to the shops, the local shops quite often mm-hmm. um, and had a coffee or a banana smoothie and – At the start, I couldn't say banana smoothie. So I was walking to the shops saying banana smoothie, banana smoothie, banana smoothie. It's like (laughs) And then you get in front of people and think, oh, I'm too afraid to say I have a latte. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. I, Yeah. Yeah, It took a while, but yeah, I did it. So, yeah. And did the stroke impact your ability to walk? Um, I was able to walk two days after the stroke. Ah. So it was my right hand that's still causing me problems. Mm -hmm. Um, And are you right-handed? Yes. That's unfortunate. Yes, Mm. yes. Um, But I learned to write left-handed. Oh, wow. I don't write left-handed anymore. (laughs) (laughs) um, It's a skill you were um, happy to give up. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. but when I was in hospital, I was writing left-handed. I know this is probably the way down there on the list of things to think about, but did you have to do things like change your signature places? Because when you – obviously your signature would look significantly different and then that, how do they recognise yeah. it as you? Um, 
that's one of the things that I worked on when I got home from hospital. Um, I couldn't write when I went home from hospital, Mm -hmm. Um, but the rehab in the home um, OT got me to do a test and she said, can you write? And I said, no. (laughs) Um, And she said, well, just try. Give it a shot. Um, And, yeah, so she got me writing and I wrote my name um, and it was legible. (laughs) So that was good Mm -hmm. Um, and the OT at the hospital got me doing work and writing at home, Mm -hmm. Um, my homework. (laughs) So, yeah, I um, really, really focused on my signature and it's back to where it was but it takes time um, and a lot of effort Mm -hmm. (laughs) but, yeah, I can write um, my signature now. I mean, it's not like we have to do many checks or things like that, but if you have to sign things for the bank or, exactly. or you know, wherever they keep yeah. your signature on record, yep. it needs to look like that, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> All of these little things, like I suppose, you know, my first thought, because my brain does go in odd places, and my first thought is, oh, my goodness, could you toilet yourself and did you have to rely on – like that is my worst nightmare. I know. I know as far as <laughs> nightmares go, it's probably – shouldn't be up there, but it really no, is. No, no. <laughs> it, it, was tr- it was hard, um, but I had to do everything left-handed. Yeah. So um, I could go to the toilet on my own um, and do everything pretty much on my own. Yeah. Um, it was – at breakfast time in the hospital, um, I had to get someone to open my milk to pour my milk on my um, cereal. Yeah. Um, and I had to use my left hand to use a fork and a spoon and things like that. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how to do this. It. This just feels so <laughs> uncomfortable. I know. I know. So, yeah. yeah. But I had I had no choice, so I had to do it. It's either that or you get really skinny. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's always an option, but it's probably not the best one. No. Probably best to push through and try yeah. and learn how to yes. eat left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you were in the hospital, before we were recording, you said that like one of the hard things in hospital was that there were so many tests and so many procedures that you had no choice over. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, the angiograms um, they did in the hospital mm-hmm. – um, Obviously, it's a hospital, so they prioritise. Yeah. Um, so if I was having an angiogram, I could get bumped down the list. But I um, couldn't eat Ugh. before the angiogram. So I think it was oh, two o'clock one night, uh, one afternoon, um, and I was waiting for an angiogram and I couldn't eat um, after midnight the day before. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that was hard. Um, and the medications were hard. Um, and I didn't have any say about the medication of, that I was on. Mm-hmm. Um, but the nurses advocated for me. So, oh, nice. Um, they were saying she's independent, she's moving around she doesn't need those drugs anymore so um they were really great and you had a good medical team oh fantastic yeah because you do hear nightmares yes yes Mm. but i think it's the attitude that you go in with as well yeah if you're positive and trust the team. I also think quite a few nurses have got twisted, dark sense of humour. Exactly. And so if you've got that as well, yes. then you're going to go okay. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but if you, you know, if you don't have that interesting sense of humour, yep. then um, you might struggle a bit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So that could have helped. Yeah. Yeah. So that they were great. Yeah. And you were saying that you were quite fortunate in that they didn't come and wake you up multiple times through the night to check that you were sleeping. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, because yeah. 55 days of no sleep because they're constantly shining a torch in your yeah. eyes. Yeah, they um, had the ske- set schedule when I was in um, Sir Charles Gardner. Mm-hmm. So six hourly obs. And then when um, I was in Fiona Stanley, they had my tablets at 
eight and eight mm-hmm. and I did my schedule um, rehab, um, OT, speech, physio, all of that stuff um, during the day. But other than that, I was left to my own devices. So you were at Charlie Gardner's for – that was initially after you had the aneurysm and then you had the stroke there as well? Yes, yeah. How long were you at Charlie Gardner's for? 25 days. So about half the – Yep. time yeah and then um, Fiona Stanley was for rehab is that yes. right yeah so I imagine it was very different going from medical ward to a rehab ward um I I loved Sir Charles Gardner <laughs> <laughs> um the nurses were fantastic um the nurses were fantastic at Fiona Stanley as yeah. well don't get me wrong but um yeah I just loved everything about Fiona um Sir Charles Gardner um yeah so and I was quite scared about moving to the rehab yeah um but they were fantastic as well so do you think the fear with moving to the rehab was that it was going to be different and what was it going to be like yeah yeah change yeah (laughs) because you've been through quite a bit of change over those 25 days and they they were all um, with me when it happened. Yeah. So the nurses. So they were with you. Exactly. Mm. The nurses, and they didn't change dramatically um, on the um, neurological ward. Mm-hmm. So I saw the same people. The same faces. Day in, day out. Yeah. Um, so that was good. But Have you been back to visit them? I have, but um, they were so busy. Uh, so it's like, hi, bye. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a shame. Because yeah. I imagine that would be really rewarding for them as yes. well. Yeah. To see how far you've come. Yes. So especially since when you left, you weren't speaking, you yep. weren't able to, you know, use your, le- your right side. Yeah. So it would be beautiful for them to actually see yes. that progress. Yes. Yeah. Um. So what was it like being in physio what was it like being in rehab um frustrating for me to like learning to talk because it was all there in my head and you just couldn't but get I your couldn't, mouth to yeah exactly so yeah and I had um trouble finding the words so um one of the things that I had a trouble with was what goes on your foot before a shoe a sock. Mm, uh, nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't think of the word. <laughs> so I knew that it went on before your um, yeah. shoe. Yeah. Uh, but look, I can see it in my head. I know. I just, yeah. yeah. And I couldn't think of the word. So I, um, I did Google searches so much. <laughs> Oh my um, goodness! I would love to see your Google search history. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh yeah, and like a bike chain. Like yeah. I couldn't think what the word was for the chain. And yeah. It's like I can't think of it. I know it, <laughs> but yeah, it was crazy. Your mum, um, who I know outside of yeah. this, so um, and she's how I know of your story because yes. she shared your progress, and um, I guess she shared her concern and distress but also her pride and um how amazing you are for the progress that you've made she also shared a really inappropriately humorous story (laughs) (laughs) with that you know you're a year in the journey now and still struggling to find words yes so do you know which story that I'm talking about I do (laughs) (laughs) Um, so is that okay to share definitely um and I so the reason when she told me this the reason that I just really appreciate it is because a year later you are still finding humor in it yes and um so she told me that you went out for lunch and uh, you didn't know that squid had testicles <laughs> <So>. <laughs> i know and i thought it was i was saying tentacles yeah, but <laughs> yeah it um, wasn't until she pulled me up on it <laughs> yes i am never funny. going to be able to order squid rings again <laughs> without thinking about squid testicles oh. That's so funny. Um, but, yeah, so a year later it's still tricky sometimes for yes, you to find the yeah. words and yeah. 
But luckily you're surrounded by people who are more than happy to laugh at you. Exactly. So, <laughs> and you are happy to join. They're not laughing at you. They're laughing I know. with you. But I know. yeah, happy to join in with yes, that. Yes, definitely. Thank goodness because laughter does get us through, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Were there any moments that you found, apart from putting your eyeliner on, um, that you thought, I'm out, I can't do this anymore, like I don't care that I can't speak or, you know, I, I don't care that I can't write with my right hand anymore, this is too hard, I don't no. want to do it. No way. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I didn't give up. Yeah. So were there times that you wanted to throw things at the physio or the speech therapy or the OT? No. Oh, go okay, you. <laughs> they, like, they were fantastic and they were um, supportive and... Yeah, they want, just wanted the best for me. Yeah. So, yeah. And they really are, like my experience with physios and OTs and speech therapists, they really are passionate about what they do and yeah. they, are, they really care and they yeah. do want the best for you. Yes. So it's just when you're the person that's in there that can't do it and they're, you know, sometimes you think, oh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they, they were fantastic. So I couldn't complain at all. Yeah. What was an average day like? in when you were in rehab so it was the same schedule every day um so physio from 9 till 9 45 and then speech from 10 30 till 11 and then something before um speech and OT, mm-hmm. um, 11.30 till 12. And then after lunch, it was um, a group setting with brain injuries. Ah. So learning to talk and doing all of the things. So it was like a card game ah. and we had to match. And you had to use your words to um, ask other people if they had that card. Yeah. And it was so hard. <laughs> so like playing Go Fish. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh. did you have to go through like group therapy or anything like that around? Um, in outpatients, mm-hmm. um, I had group sessions. So that was speech and OT um, and return to work stuff. Mm. Um And fatigue management. Yeah, I bet that must have been really, like, managing the fatigue would be very difficult. um, I think it's better for me because I've got two teenage boys and a husband who's into sport. Um, So I was doing everything beforehand, Mm -hmm. um, doing the washing and the ironing and meal, meal preparations and everything like that. So... I knew what I can do um, for meals and things like that. If we were having a busy day, yeah. I'd put so- something in the slow cooker. Um, and that's, that's... So you'd already got some of those strategies there exactly. that you could call on to yeah. try and, you know, how am I going to get through this rather yeah. than having to constantly go yes. through a drive through <laughs> um, Yeah, and I'm pretty organised anyway, so... Like I'm a scheduler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Still have a good to-do list, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, I think that was easier for me to cope with the fatigue. Yeah. And I listened to my body. Yeah. So if I was feeling tired, I'd have a lay down or have a sleep. Um, so, yeah, it was hard at the start, but... Yeah. You found your skills to get through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that um, being a you know being a planner, it was easier that when you were in rehab, everything was scheduled and everything was consistent. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. was great. Yeah. Because I was sort of going, oh, would that get to the point where you think, oh God, we're doing like it's Groundhog Day, same thing day in day out, or no, is it no, actually no. because you were making progress? Yeah. So, like, the yeah the um support staff were fantastic and they could like they could tell that you were improving Mm. um day by day yeah so it was good 
Did you find ways to celebrate those improvements? Um, my dad didn't come every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was showing off <laughs> about what <laughs> I could I do, do with now, my right dad. hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I was, um, yeah, showing off about what I could do with my right hand because yeah. when I got to Fiona Stanley, I couldn't really use my right hand at all. Yeah. Um, and I progressed to opening the doors and things like that. And it was like, that was an achievement. Yeah, that's a huge achievement. Yeah. 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 Did you have to make modifications at home? Um, not really. The only thing that I needed help with was pots and pans. Oh, um, shame. Someone else is going to have to do the dishes. No, no. It was. <laughs> <laughs> um, my husband does the dishes every night. Um, well so, done. <laughs> yes, yes. That was the rule when we moved out together. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if I was draining a pot of potatoes, uh, yeah. I'd get the kids to do it or Jeff to do it. Yeah. Um, if I was using the oven, I'd get the kids or yeah, Jeff to help to, with things in and out. Exactly. Yeah. So I didn't burn myself and – Or drop the entire dinner and yeah, waste exactly. it once it's cooked yeah. and then yeah. cry because – Yeah. <laughs> but, That'd be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I said to the kids and Jeff, um, if – I need help, mm-hmm. I'll ask. Yeah. So So step back until yeah. I ask for help. Exactly. Yeah. I was determined to get it. And that determination seems to have really um, stood you in good stead. Like yeah. you've made such huge improvements. Yes. And I know for you, you are obviously aware that your speech is not where it was. Yeah. But for anybody else, we can't tell. Yes. <laughs> I can tell. You look at me. Mm, Yeah, well, good for you, but I can. (laughs) Yeah. At work, it's harder um, because I can't get the words across that I need to. Yeah. Um, And are you in a role where you do need to speak a lot? Um, Yeah, I do. Yeah, I I have to interview people, um, but. That's obviously on hold at the moment yeah. when I'm um, recovering. So, yeah. But work have been fantastic. Yeah. So. Oh, that's really good. And yeah. you had a slow transition back to work? Yes. Um, so, I started back in May, um, the beginning of May, doing three hours a day, three days a week, mm-hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I've progressed to five hours a day, three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. (laughs) Um, And then I've got an appointment with my GP next week to return to pre-injury hours. Oh, wow. So that's good. That's huge. Yeah. 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 Because I was working part-time, so that's easier. Yeah. Still though. Yeah. You know, to do that with – you only went back in May. Yep. That's amazing. And then um, we've got – a, um, a schedule booked in for the rehab provider mm-hmm. um, to return to my pre-injury um, duties by September, November. Mm-hmm. And have you made it back to the gym? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did that go when, you know, you walked in for the first time? Um, at the start, I was doing a modified program mm-hmm. that the physio – had set out for me yeah and it was so boring (laughs) oh god (laughs) there has got to be something better than this (laughs) yes I I could do it in the shower it's Uh, like so easy um so that was hard because I wanted to do yeah the workouts that I was doing beforehand um but obviously I didn't risk anything um and I didn't want (laughs) to Follow professionals' put, advice. Yes, yeah. and I didn't put um, my PT through that because yeah. she was, <laughs> she was um, at the aneurysm. So yeah. she's like, she "What's your heart rate? Heart, very- what's your heart rate?" <laughs> so I know. Let's let's bring it down a notch. Yes. I'm walking at five k. I know. <laughs> like, I mean, you can probably manage this. Yeah. 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 So, um, but it was good to get back to normal. Yeah. Um, Were you nervous walking back into the gym the first time at all? No, no, no. 
So there's no association there that, you know, the gym caused the aneurysm or anything like no, that. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Um, Logically, I know it doesn't, but sometimes yes. we're not 100% logical yes. around these things. My ha- um, my youngest son said to me when we were going, going home from footy training one day because we go past the gym and he said, do you have PTSD about the gym? <laughs> and I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, probably all right there. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. what about your PT? Does she have PTSD from it? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but she's really cautious yeah. about everyone. Yeah, now. I bet. Yeah, but yeah, I just think it's amazing that she was so onto it and called the ambulance so yeah. quickly because yeah. I imagine that the results would have been very different if she had. Yes. It, so yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely brilliant. Yes. That you were there with people and that they knew what to do and yep. didn't go, oh, well, maybe go for a bit of a lie down. Yes. You know, that kind no. of thing. <laughs> yeah, probably not the right thing to do when no. having a brain aneurysm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering, what surprised you the most going through this? The support we got from the wider community. Mm. Um, I know friends and family come together in times of crisis hopefully (laughs) yes yes well my friends and family yeah they do yeah Um, but the footy clubs and work and everyone really like they were so so for supportive and Yeah. yeah was i think that's really lovely i think we're living in a time where everyone's moving so quickly and moving um you know, so fast that sometimes we forget to stop and actually see what's around us. Yeah. And, you know, not that you wanted to have to go through an aneurysm and a stroke to be able to stop and smell the roses, but you did actually get to see all of those people that are there yeah. in your corner. Yes. So, yes. and often we don't notice that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was so surprised. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I guess. I would do that for any of my friends and family so they'd return the favour, I it, guess. It's interesting because I think a lot of people say that, well, I'd do that for somebody else, but I wasn't expecting it for me. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why that is. I know. So, like, of course, if you do it for other people, then those are the kinds of people that you surround yourself exactly, with. So yeah. you would expect that, but yeah, I guess that surprise doesn't surprise me. Yeah. If that makes sense. How have you adjusted to... You know, we're, I think we're hearing at the moment new normal way too often. But you have got a new normal, yeah. and but your new normal is changing all the time. So yeah. how have you adjusted throughout this whole process? Um, I just get on with it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's no other option. So, yeah. like, suck it up and do it. <laughs> it's a beautiful message. I think we might get that on a T-shirt. <laughs> 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 yeah, perfect. Um, and so, have you, apart from the, um, you know, seeing the, seeing the amount of support that you've got around you, were there any other silver linings? Um, the support that I got at the hospital, it like, it surprised me, but not surprised me, really. Mm-hmm. Like the team that I had in rehab and HDU and the ward. Um, What's so HDU? High Dependency Unit. All right, that, thanks. That <laughs> was where I was um, at the start. At the start, yeah. Before I had the stent put in um, and they were so fantastic. Like, So the stent was, sorry to interrupt you there, the stent was for the aneurysm, yes. is that right? Yeah. And then there was a blockage in the stent and that's what caused the stroke? Yes, yeah. So the thing that was saving you then caused you to have a major stroke. Yes, but that was one of the risks. Yeah, putting the stent in, but, but it was no I'd, option. Exactly. Mm. So, yeah, which I think that's kind of goes back to what you were saying before about the you know you ha- were having these medical procedures, and you didn't have any options around them. So all these yeah. things were happening to your body, yep. and you had to consent to them. But actually. There's no option. Yeah. So that, it must have been – you're a very independent woman yep. to have all these decisions that are being made around you and particularly after the stroke where you couldn't speak about – that must have been really, really difficult. 
that was the most difficult part after the stroke. Yeah. Because when I was like when I had the aneurysm, mm-hmm. I could talk. Mm-hmm. After a while. <laughs> <laughs> um but after the stroke I couldn't get across what I needed to do or needed to um ask for. So like even doing my menu in yeah. the hospital. It's like Give me the menu, and I'll, and I'll pick. point. <laughs> it's like when we were, um, when you know, you go away to a foreign speaking yeah, exactly. country, and you're like, point at a picture that looks vaguely familiar, yeah. and put up two fingers. Yes, type yes. Of thing. yeah, yeah. So that was the hardest thing. And uh, so with that, I think one of the things that I've been hearing you say is that you were still in there. Yes, but you were sort of trapped in this non-verbal yep. shell. Yes, um, and that I think sometimes that must be hard for the people that are around you as well frustrating for you because you can't get anything out but hard for people knowing well is she you know is she still there and what is there um i think after the annual um the stroke i was um yeah i could spell anaesthetist <laughs> I don't know why. I can't spell that <laughs> the best of times. Um, and, yeah, so I was saying anaesthetist over and over and over um, and they got me singing the Eagles song because that was um, one of the things that I could do. So I was singing that to everyone. <laughs> How often are you singing that now? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. Um, so, yeah, they just found ways to um, to find you. Yeah. And connect. Um, and I think on the Friday after the stroke, um, my dad came to visit and I was waiting for the angiogram um, and I was hangry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I... Um, hangry and scared doesn't sound like a good combination. No. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I s- swore. And Dad said she's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. And I find often dads are the ones who struggle the most to cope with these kinds of things. Definitely. Is, is that why he didn't come and visit you every day, or he just you know couldn't no, no. get there? Or? Um, we ha- were restricted to two visitors uh, in rehab. Yeah. Um, and so you obviously, had to cycle through. Yeah. 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 And I think. I don't want to say men of a certain age, uh, but sometimes men of my dad's generation and older really struggle with showing emotions and really struggle with that. No, he cried. He cried? <laughs> yeah. All the time. I find that really difficult because I'm not used to seeing men my dad's age and older crying. Yeah. When I do see them, like, so I work in um, at a lot of weddings and when I see the dads cry... That's it. I'm off. Like yeah. I can't cope with seeing men cry. Yes, yeah. And I know that I know that we're encouraging men to cry and encourage men to be in touch with their feelings. I get yeah. that, but I'm still not used to seeing it. Yes. So that sets me off and I think how did you cope seeing your dad cry? He cries all the time. All oh, right, okay. So it was normal <laughs> for you. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went to the grand final in 2006. Oh, yeah, I'm used to men crying at that kind he, of thing. <laughs> he was uh <laughs> He was crying when um, they played the national anthem and oh. things like that. So Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So he's a big sap too, just like me. Yeah. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> and me. Yeah, perfect. So if if you had somebody who was like a family member was going through that similar kind of experience to what you had, what would you be telling their family members? Be there. Mm-hmm. Um, ask questions. And... Um, I think really encourage the person that's had the stroke um, to attend the um, group sessions, um, outpatients and everything like that because they've really got your best interests at heart Mm -hmm. and they want you to succeed. So push it. Yeah. So I've got two questions with that. One was, did your family ask any questions of any of the doctors, specialists, nurses, physios, OTs that you thought, oh, God, could the world please open up and swallow me whole? No. Oh, that's such a shame. I was really hoping for (laughs) (laughs) 
I wrote the questions. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so they stayed on script. Yeah. Perfect. Um, when I was in hospital in rehab, mm-hmm. I had a book that I thought that I needed to ask the questions. Um, so like, could I travel again? Yeah. If COVID finishes. Yeah, that's it. Should we ever, <laughs> you know, as a general yeah. public be allowed to travel again? Yeah, Can you so, travel? <laughs> or if I um, went to Broome, could I fly um, to Broome? Or things like that. Could I go away for a hospital um, for a holiday? Yeah. Um, do I need to be near a hospital? Um, mm. So I had questions that I needed to ask, um, and Mum would write down all the questions that um, I thought of, mm-hmm. um, and they just answered the questions. I think it was my discharge appointment yeah and yeah they just went through and asked um mum asked the questions and they answered so yeah and what was your biggest concern like with being a burden to the family was there a time that you thought that you wouldn't improve or that your family was worried that you were going that you weren't going to make it um after the stroke Mm -hmm. Um, because I was recovering so well Mm -hmm. um, after the aneurysm, I think that was a wake-up call. Yeah. And we didn't know um, and the uncertainty of it. Mm. So that was the main thing, I think. Um, Yeah. I made huge progress after the stroke, Mm -hmm. but at the... at the time of the stroke, when I was in um, the high, de- high dependency ward, um, yeah, it was pretty scary. Yeah. And coming back to the other question that I had when you were talking before about what would you tell someone whose loved one was going through this, what was the most helpful thing for you? Um just having family and friends around me mm. I it made me feel that I was um normal yeah so having friends and family around me mm-hmm. um yeah just made me feel like I was you were normal. still you yeah you just you with Limited right arm and, yeah. you know, <laughs> limited speech ability. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. But that's okay because you could still laugh the whole time, right? Yes. Yeah, that's – yeah. It's all good. Yes. <laughs> My nephew gave me his um, phonics cards. Oh, oh that's adorable. <laughs> and and I, I couldn't um, – I couldn't for the life of me say the words that were on the pictures. So I couldn't say dog – I couldn't say cat. Oh, you I were learning say him. with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was better was than well me. <laughs> and oh. we were laughing and laughing and laughing because I was getting it wrong all the time. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah. We, that could have gone one of two ways. Yeah. You know, you could have found that devastating and been really upset. But yes. I think we I often say with my kids, what do you have control over? And the only thing that we've got control over is how we respond to a situation. Yeah. So, yeah, we can respond by getting frustrated and upset. Yeah. But the amount of progress that you're likely to make in that situation compared to if you find the funny side and you can find humour yeah. in, and often that's dark humour and sick and twisted, or you know, depending on depending on whose definition yes. it is. I think it's normal, but other people think it's weird, dark, yeah. sick and twisted. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, find your people. You're yeah. all good. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. luckily you were surrounded by a tribe of people that, you know, could laugh with you and yeah. get you through that. So um, if somebody else is, you know, listening to this and they have had a similar experience and they're at the start of their journey, what would you want to tell them? Um, Trust the people in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, They want the best for you, even though you don't think it at the time. Um, Do the homework. um, Do the outpatients. Do the work in the hospital, in rehab, um, yeah, just, that's the main thing. Just do thing. it. Exactly. Yeah. 
And that's the, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. It's there. You've just got to, you've just got to relearn it. You know, yes. you've learned it once. Yes. You can do it again. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, have you got any other thoughts that you would like to share? Um, not really. It's, it's hard because I don't think that I've done anything special. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah. You just didn't give up. Yeah. You know, yeah. And do you think it's changed who you are as a person now? Um, not really. I've, I'm more empathetic, Mm -hmm. I think, um, because I've seen the other people in the hospital and I realise how lucky I am. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Has it changed your relationship with your kids or your husband or... You know, I don't else? talk as much. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good thing. <laughs> mm, yeah. well, it depends who you're asking, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> yes. That's it. They yeah. may see that as a silver lining. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mum's a lot slower with the comebacks now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and has it brought you closer to people that you thought that you, you know, that have surprised you? Um, not really. Mm-hmm. Be like become closer, but not. Yeah, everyone everyone's been so amazing, so I can't can't, I can't single complain. people out. No, yeah. yeah. And did you? So you said that people, you know, dropping off meals, things like that. Was is there anything that is, you know, if you've got a friend or a family member that's experiencing this, is there anything that you think is like practical things that you can do to support people? Hmm. See, I was um the outside of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you were being looked after exactly. in the hospital and fed yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, my husband didn't do much at home. Mm-hmm. Um, he did all the outside work and everything like that. And I think it was a wake up call to him to see how, how much, much I yeah. do. Um, so the washing and the ironing and shopping and things like that um how lo- um how often we change towels yeah. and sheets and things yeah. like that it's like um so that was a wake up call for him um but yeah the dropping off of meals really helped mm-hmm. um and just rostering um the visiting hours because we were restricted to yeah. two visitors at that one a time. standard restriction or was that a restriction that was in place COVID. because of COVID? Yeah. 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 And look, I imagine that you probably wouldn't have wanted an entire room full anyway. Like with no. having so much therapy during the day. Yeah. That would be quite exhausting. At the start it was. Mm. Um, and I think the last week of rehab – when I was wanting to go home. Yeah, pushing um, yourself harder to make sure you hit the milestones. Yeah. I I just said to mum and um, Jeff, just limit the visitors. Yeah. Like friends, um, friends, close friends and family. Yeah. And that's all I wanted yeah. at, on the last week. Um, but when I got to Fiona Stanley – because we live um, close by, mm. I like I w- wanted to meet with my friends because yeah. I'd been a- away from them yeah. for a- pretty much a month. So it's a long time to be stuck isolated. in a hospital room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that isolation has been quite difficult in the last twelve months, anyway. Yeah. But add to that. Yeah, I guess the additional restrictions of not being able to move the way you had and not being able to speak. Yeah. Even more so. Yeah. How, how do you go texting? Important things. Did you learn to text with your left hand? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I still only text with my left hand now because <laughs> the right hand's so slow. Yeah. I can do it, but it's slower. Yeah. Because 
all of these things that we do just take for granted, yeah. like being able to um, text or, you know, use your thumbprint to get into your yes. phone and things like that. And trying to control that, putting your thumb down to do your thumbprint. Yes. It's harder than you think. I know. It was probably not harder than you think. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of those things that are that we do really kind of go, oh, it's just second nature to do that or to, you know, to pick the kettle up. I pick the kettle up with my right hand. Well, yes. when you filled the kettle instead of just putting two cups of water in, yeah. you can't lift it with your right hand. Yes. And then yeah. I've um, I've got strong enough to to be able to lift the kettle yep, now. Yep. And I <laughs> like can, your priorities. Yeah. You can lift a bottle of wine. I can't drink. <laughs> oh, <laughs> at the moment. So, so you can you drive? Yes. Oh, so you designate a driver. Yes. We're all good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like being pregnant again. <laughs> oh, dear. But without having to go. Well, no, I was going to say without having to go through all of the side effects. But you've had yeah. a, you've had enough side effects. <laughs> yes. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Any other things like so you can't drink? Is that because of the medication that you're on? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. will that be ongoing? Um, I've got a I'm not an alcoholic I'd just like to put that out there like (laughs) I know um I've got an angiogram in August Mm -hmm. um so they'll see if I can get off the blood thinners Mm -hmm. um and then so an angiogram is where they go in through the groin and they put like a camera in is that ah okay awesome because I was going to go how did you go with having like I know that you have to get through these things yeah but you know, all these things are around the groin. How do you go with that? I was um, you out unconscious it. anyway, Fair probably. Enough, no. <laughs> but when I had the um, distally, distally um, through, through the, the wrist, wrist. Yep. yeah, um, that was good. Yeah. I didn't have to be immobile. Yeah. Um, so normally you can't go to the toilet if you have it through the go- groin. Mm-hmm. Um so I opted to have the one in October through the wrist. Yeah. Um, and it's easier for them to monitor. I didn't monitor. know that was an option. Yeah. Hmm. That's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's easier that for them to monitor as well um, and they don't have to um, school you about going to the toilet yeah. and using a bedpan and oh god oh god <laughs> yeah oh, all of these joys <laughs> i know and i'm um, going off on a tangent sorry but so they put the um camera through whichever brain it yep. is and then that goes up into your brain yes does that freak you out no <laughs> okay because that really freaks me out <laughs> no because i've been through it so, so many, many times, times now <laughs> yeah and the first time obviously you went in a fit state to no. be worried about it so no you know, you've an old hat at it now yeah yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> when I had the angiogram in October um they showed me the photos when I had the um angiogram in my body oh um, my God. about the aneurysm had gone and they said yeah Look at the pictures; it's gone. Oh, <laughs> it's like yay! Well, that—I mean, that's really cool. Yeah, but also kind of freaky. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thank God they uh, have got different ways of treating them. Yeah, because you—I mean—you didn't have to have brain surgery no, and things like no. which is amazing. My scalp is in in place <laughs> that your scalp is in place you didn't yep. have to shave your head no all of those no yeah. look look lots of things to be um Thankful grateful about, for yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and probably not having to shave your head is really way down the bottom of yeah. the line and, um you know being able to take yourself to the toilet is probably <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> oh dear um so anything else before we do wrap up is there anything else that you would like to say at all not really <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and sharing your experiences and letting me ask really um, inappropriate and odd questions. <laughs> it's fine. No, I do really appreciate it. And I've I've learned so much more about the whole process that I just, I've, I've realised how much I take for granted. So um, I do really appreciate you sharing that with me and with the people listening. So no problem. Thank you.
Thank you for joining me for today's episode of A Hidden World of Women, a podcast brought to you by Women's Health and Wellbeing Services. For more information on the services we offer, head to whws.org.au or Women's Health and Wellbeing Services on YouTube and social media. Looking forward to the next episode where we uncover the hidden world of women.